Bounty is out, so the Chen and Chant are open. And harder to punish as well. Yeah, and for Secret, you take away that the Lone Druid, which was Old Eleven's hero that won E Home, the, the lead up tournament to the previous major, the Shanghai major in MDL. So it's just kind of respect bands when you don't quite know exactly. You're versing a team you haven't versed in a long while, they're going to drop differently because these teams don't really ever meet except on an international land stage. So you just want to ban out kind of signature heroes here in the early game stage. And we may see some heroes pop up on, for either team that the other one doesn't normally experience. For example, in the Chinese scene, there's been some Venom resurgence as a core. We could see something like that squeak through and really upset the balance on a Wisp ban in the first round. Common pick for Secret, but for that to get banned in the first round, it's going to leave a lot of other things open. Nature's Prophet, Chen, Enchantress, a lot of heroes that we see in a lot of games, not to mention the typical Invoker, Doom, etc. that yeah. are really popular. And Earth Spirit going to be the ban from Secret, so now the first pick going over to Yeoman. Doom right away, locked in. Do they really pick Wisp that much, though? I find it strange that you actually first ban over Secret, because I think they're actually one of the teams that don't don't play Wisp very often. I mean, they, they did play it yesterday, um, and they put some strategies around it. Yeah, I I just think like histor historically though, it's I mean, Pilot I has played it a decent amount, but it's always been a backup strategy yeah. more for Team Secret. Like it's never been a bread and butter. Like okay, first stage, let's get Wisp. They'd rather go for like the Puppy Chen or other heroes. Maybe they're worried about the the gameplay change that it forces you to play under. Right. I mean, you have to fear. Oh, I can't farm anywhere on the map by myself as a support because they can always TP there. That's a huge threat. It's also pretty good versus the Doom. That's yeah, true because so... it saves them. Yeah. That, it makes more sense after seeing the first pick, but before that, I was like, well, why, why, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, drafting more to their strengths right now for Ehome, but that, like you guys said, left his profit open. Invoker, of course, slipping through once again. It's picked up by Secret, and now balls back in Ehome's court. It's been a while since we've seen an Artesian Invoker. Not if you watch the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, they, those have been a bit hit or miss. <laughs> I, I really like Universe's Nature's Prophet as well. He's generally a very conservative player, but that's going to lead to getting lots and lots of items. So as you get to the late game scenarios, he'll be able to output that in really good ways. I almost feel like he may need to change his playstyle and be less conservative, though, because you look at what their big problems yesterday, it's like they've got Arteezy farming mid and OD, Envy farming safe lane. They need some, one of those three players needs to just go start fighting, and Nature's probably can do that. Yeah. So I like the hero for him, but I don't think he wants to play conservative. I think he wants to be very active, teeping around, trying to get involved early, uh, setting a fast tempo, because otherwise Ehome will just walk all over them. That's a really good point. You can't just leave it up to just the supports to space create setup ganks. Sometimes it has to be the offlane as well. So, like you said, two carries and another casual farming offlaner that goes to team fights. There's not enough space happening. After their pick, Enchant. Another hero that's been mentioned as priority, now this time being banned out in the second phase for Ehome. I'd be careful for a Nyx if, if I were Team Secret. I think Nyx is like really good versus Invoker and uh, MP, and especially with the Bounty Hunter being banned out. You want a hero that can catch both of those two, and it's also pretty decent at protecting a Death Prophet. Uh, we saw it ran, what, yesterday by Wings, I think? Death Prophet hmm. plus the Nyx. Yeah, right now you home need that kind of reversing guy, like you say, the Invoker Prophet, whether it's a Nyx, you need some kind of catch. Batrider also another hero we've seen them play a bit. They've even run Batrider in a safe lane from Landem. So this is a team who's very willing to do some kind of unorthodox picks in, ro in di different roles than you'd normally see. Definitely like Bat versus NP and Invoker. It's pretty successful there. As long as you don't get cold snap, then you're yeah. pretty much dead. <laughs> but I, think, cool. I think the key thing when you have a death prop and you want to push down towers is you do need some threat of an initiator to keep your opponents away from defending that tower. So having a, a Batrider type hero always yeah. works well there. That's definitely a good point. So I, Eon successfully bringing out Wisp and Chen, and Chen, taking that all off the board. I mean, they could still go something like Enigma. Um, it's a little iffy against heroes like DP and Doom, but I would give them a good jungling advantage. You can also rotate and take towers. They, they, they're decent, at, quite good at towers right now. They've got Invoker summons and Nature's Prophet summons. Maybe they go all in, more summons. How many summons is too many? <laughs> well, Doom can only eat one of them, you know? Like, how do you stop it? Yeah, that's what you call the Alchemist. Then any summons is summons too many. That's true. <laughs> so you're saying they should pick Brood, right? <laughs> Just go cool. all the way. Five seconds remaining. Beastmaster is still in the pool. It's a bit surprising, yeah, to see Beastmaster not grabbed. Vision has been prioritized a lot by all the teams so far. Yeah. Unlikely Secret will grab it, obviously, because they have profit, but definitely a good hero uh, against the heroes in the pool. 
<laughs> one thing that's strange to me about about Secret is that they actually haven't been playing Ursa that much. They tried it once at the major, and ever since then they haven't haven't tried it again. Uh, for a team that likes to do Roshan a lot, uh, it's very surprising that they don't utilize that in their toolkit. I wonder if they're gonna shift. This is not a bad game for it. It's pretty good against DP and Doom. If yep. they're semi locked down and you get on top of them right away, you can kill them pretty rapidly. We'll go with the staple Pylai Die Lion though. Um, max out Hex after the Earth Spike gives them tons of great disable in the mid game while also providing mana for allies. And ooh! Alright, yeah. no more summons. Yeah, you know, they, <laughs> they picked this hero five times actually. It's, it's not, it shouldn't be surprising at all that Ehome picked up Winter Wyvern. They've use that five times, they use Clinks four times, they've used Weaver four times too, so they are slightly outside of the norm when it comes to what some of their picks. That's Come on, really... versus an Invoker though, like he's gonna Sunstrike, you've got a Lion on top of that. Like... I think it's more for the anti-push. I think, yeah. like, the, the way they play around the Major's Prophet, it's like TP, you get a kill, push the lanes, and then Winter Wyvern there with the Splinter Blast is just exceptionally good versus the summons. Yeah. Not so great against Forge Spirits though. Um... Pretty good against the Treants, but... Yeah, you can go like a 4-4-1 four, four, though, I think. And also the summons work against yourself too with the Winter's Curse. It's true. I think it also sets up for like a really nice silence. It's not a great combo, but it's it's, it's still nice. You can get like three people in the silence with Death Prophet. Plus, either curse. way, um, Cold Embrace with Death Prophet is amazing because oh, she yeah. has so much HP that the, the Sun Strike is not going to even offset the regen you get from it. So really good utility there. Put the couple that with like a Yules as well, then she's not dying for eight seconds or so, and the damage she deals can be really incredible. Yeah, and Secret have like tended to not pick up defensive supports. They used to, you know, always have like the Dazzle or something like that. And Winter Wyvern is like really great at just nailing an Invoker or something really, really quickly. I mean, they they did pick a Dazzle yesterday, yeah. but I I think they may shy away from that after that experience. I'm gonna pick up Puppy's Earthshaker as the the roaming option here. I haven't seen that in a while from Puppy. Very passive in most cases. Um, they're going to have two supports that both need blink daggers. Um, usually, Secret does rotate um, Eternal Envy out of the safe lane really early, head him to the jungle, and then Lion will take the safe lane farm. They do this consistently for a long period of time. So I expect we'll see something similar. Puppy will then essentially have to be the greed until, or at least uh, be poor until he gets the blink dagger hero. But I'm not too worried about Lion, so I think they can make this work. I think it's very much they recognize that e Home's playstyle is going to be the, they're going to be the aggressors most likely in this matchup, so they want to have huh? that defensive support to kind blood. of counter initiate with, or at least blood throw a fissure, disengage, and then you keep you keep like a core hero alive. It's pretty good against the DP. I mean, she's fast, but you can fissure block off. If she ulties, you fissure, you get away. That's hugely valuable for your team. So I, I would agree. That sounds pretty good. Plus more magic damage, you can burst on Winter Wyvern targets if you really need to. No. I think both of the other supports that have troubles dealing with the Doom, <laughs> like Doom with Scorched Earth, like you don't really want to uh, blow a Fissure on them. The only thing they really have is Cold Snap for them, so Yesterday, I think the Doom kind of burn, trumps those two supports at the moment. Something. Yeah, this and top lane for Ehome like can cause a lot of problems. You have a Doom plus one, that's why the, the Dark here is banned out, so that option isn't there, but this Doom could be a full position and you get some just kind of pesky offlaner to really just harass down the, the two supports. But Lion Urshaker, yeah, very much, I, I, I feel like that could be a, a big problem as far as what M, uh, as far as far MB securing farm against the Doom. It, it is scary on picks, but I, I feel like Secret is one of the best at zoning offlane heroes. I feel like Pylai dies very often prioritize boots. He's extremely good at kiting the offlane hero. Even when they go boots as well, I've seen him outlane people and keep them level one for a long time. So I have a lot of confidence that that Secrets can be able to do this even though there is a Doom. The, the scary part is if it's like Winter Wyvern Doom or Range of Sabler plus Doom and they get caught out of position or something. Pick Bristle back yesterday and they're gonna head that direction again. Great against all the summons with all the cool sprays you can stack up. And just a, again, a fast paced carry for Lanham. We're not seeing him on these more greedy late game oriented ones. I'm happy to see Bristleback is a strength hero. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's what I was noting. I was like, you didn't know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> so, so I'll tweet at Pim Uncle for that one. It's his fault. All right, one yep, last fan. Confirmed. There it is. He always gives you a little bit of sass when you yeah. make out of it. Yeah. Winter Intelligence. Thanks, Pim. So what are we looking at for both teams? Anything blatantly missing uh, this time for Team Secret as they looked around out there? Oh, wow, they're just going to go ahead. Okay. Oh. Well, this is the... Uh, the Team Secret we saw at the Major, pulling out the Joe Ranger and catching teams by surprise. 
It's, it's pretty good. They don't really have a frontliner, but they've got an Earthshaker, which is kind of a pseudo way to, to rotate that out. It's not a hero that's good against Winter Wyvern because of Cold Embrace, but once Cold, like Cold Embrace only lasts like four out of the 19 possible cooldown seconds, so <laughs> once that's gone, they can blow up Death Prophet super fast. It's going to be a tough game for Death Prophet, I think. De Bristleback's going to be all right, but the other heroes, I'm a little worried about their survivability. On the, on the flip side, though, Winter Wyvern's Winter's Curse is just really good. Dr 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 oh, yeah. and her teammates can just blow her up. They needed a gap close, and they're going to pick up that right now. It's like Bristleback can, can try and run in against this draft, but at some point they're just going to kite you around. They threw the fish at the impale, and you're just going to get taken out. So. All right, well, the draft is done. We heard the thoughts here, but we'll see how it pans out. It's secret. First is E-Home, game number one, to see who takes the lead and keep their hope alive. And ESO one Manoa 2016, commentators, take us into the game. That's right, Secret versus E-Home, a match that before this tournament, many could have expected would happen in the upper bracket. Here we see them instead, an elimination match. E-Home, of course, relative success within the Chinese scene, but I say relative in that they they have to prove themselves against their brethren in VGR and LGD, who have also had, had success. They need a win here to be able to really secure that. But of course, Secret, this is their first match. Their first match, or their first first tournament as a team. It's this fresh roster that everyone is so hyped about, a big all-star lineup. But this crowd raising them up is really only going to increase the fall if they prove uh, disappointing results going out first. Battle. Jacob Blitz. It's, it's uh, well, the new roster of Secret obviously with much more limited success than uh, mm. than Ehome. But yeah, I think Ehome needs to prove, especially with the Manila Major coming up, they, they they have something to prove, right? Especially when Wings is in the winner bracket, or rather, they won their first game. Mm -hmm. So in, in that regard, I, I do think Ehome needs to prove themselves with their roster of old players. Blitz, what are your expectations here from this draft? We have Secret running with the Draw Ranger strat that came out last pick. Do you think Ehome, are they in real danger here of being run over by a Draw Ranger strat like this? Yeah, there's always the possibility when you have these kinds of lane setups, especially when you get the Invoker, uh, the Draw Aura, he can really just snowball to a win, and it's a really easy way to play around. And I know Secret for a fact, it's kind of just the way that they want to play, where they can win the lane, snowball off of the individual skill, and then make... Uh, plays together. This time around, I think the draft adjustments that they made from game one and game two uh, from yesterday are a lot better. Now they have disables. They don't solely have to just rely on uh, the Nyx Assassin or the Tidehunter this time around. They bring Puppy with the Earthshaker, you've got the Lion, and it just feels like they have more big play heroes now. Team Secret rushing into their rune at the top lane. You see a clean split here. What is the plan for some of our rotating heroes? We have Puppy on the Earthshaker. Obviously, his impact is going to be need to felt in the mid lane. Death Prophet's not the easiest hero to uh, to go up against in the mid lane. It's not, but it's just as much to just create the space that an Invoker needs, potentially even just sitting behind him. But I don't think there's a lot of room coming out on the middle lane, so it's going to be pretty farm orientated for for, uh, for the first part of the game. I think both sides are also going to be fairly happy with that. They don't really want to. I mean, they want to win the, win the lane with Bristleback, but that's about it. A specialty here, Old Eleven, he's done this a time or two before, pulls the lane from behind the Tier 1 tower and secures himself what could be a fast level 2. See whether or not our support is able to output any denies. I think what's interesting about the draft is that I don't, I don't think uh, Ehome expected the Invoker pick. When, when you're a uh, Chinese team and, uh, with Chinese players, going to players' individual streams isn't the, when they're international players streaming on Twitch, for instance. It's mm -hmm. not the uh, the natural thing to do. They do have eyes, eyes, eyes in the roster, though. Already, Old Eleven is going to be hexed up by Pilot Dine. There's not much follow-up there without the secondary disable. In fact, Old Eleven is now challenging Pilot Dine. Runs into him, eats a tango, and runs right back. Just but. poking and prodding right now. I think this is just the feeling out process for most teams where uh, it's game one. Both teams didn't expect to probably be here just because of the history that both teams have. And Fissure doesn't connect mid, at least the block, anyways. But it is going to force Old Chicken to use the salve and destroy, especially. It looks like the Invoker should pretty well for himself. 
Yeah, they really seem to be setting up our, our tour for success. We saw some of that from the, the previous series, that they do like to make sure that our tour has a good time in this mid lane. And despite going up against a Death Prophet between the Draw Ranger aura and the Earthshaker, it seems the helping hand will be enough for our tour to at least draw even. So far, CS pretty close. Right now, this throw not really going to get contested too much. The Doom is now going to make his way up here, but it's hard to open up on this, especially when you don't know where the Earthshaker is guaranteed in mid lane. Just like that, Old Chicken, he moves forward with the Spirit Type and a three man game with the Sun Strike. He's going to be able to land, and Old Chicken tries to duke his way through the river, but it's not going to happen. Our core, he gets the first blood. Really well done by Secret overall. In the last series that we saw when they played against Empire, it really felt like they weren't able to get Universe involved. And I know, Jacob, you were a little bit disappointed with his performance in general because it just felt like he wasn't playing a part of the team. But this time, setting up for the first blood, making that rotation. I think it's safe to say it was probably one of the worst games that Universe has ever played in his entire career. So, yeah, being disappointed is putting it mildly, actually. So, for, for Secret to come out dunk placing in this one is, is important also for him, I think. Having the debut debut on, on, on this star started roster. The rotations of secrets so on point. The Sunstrike blows up the Bat Rider, but still they get the kill on the Lion. Secret are trying to punish Ehom. Every single time they play aggressive like that, old chicken, he's gonna be thinking twice the next time he tries to move forward and spirit siphon up the uh, the invoker like he did, and now the top lane, even the uh, the Bat Rider is gonna be questioning himself if he starts trying to harass the lion back. I guess the downside for this is that even though the Batrider got the XP there, he's not really contesting uh, Eternal Envy and it's making Doom's job even harder because Ice Ice Ice, he wants to get in this lane and contest it as much as he can. So whenever the bat is dead or just not on the deck, it sort of just slows down his timings. Old Eleven does have the stack to go back to though and he's already got Trinkle Boots completed too. He's, he's pretty fun. I, I, I like the, the the initial trick with the Firefly where you just pulled the wave. Some bad riders go for the Sticky Napalm instead just because they're afraid that you, if you end up with the Firefly, you can't go back to the lane. A fight over the rune. Pylai Dai going to be hit by the Spirit Siphon. The Fisher is going to separate the two, though. And Old Chicken is just going to have to uh, suffice with just an Illusion rune to be picked up. Still no bottle for him. The bottle rune is going to be tagged by Fenrir. But even with Secret being a, a hit at this point, uh, I think it also, even if this was a stalemate, if this was just maintaining status quo, that would benefit them. Getting farm and levels is all they want right now. What about our bottom lane? We haven't talked about it too much. Universe against Lanham's Bristleback. Once again, Ehome continuing the trend of picking up uh, really aggressive carries for Lanham. I think it's difficult for Universe to fully contest this lane. You're not going to get a lot of denies or anything like that, especially since the Bristol's been largely left alone. But he's still going to get his, and most importantly, this hero depends mostly on the rotations more than it does the pure laning phase. Your laning phase is always going to be above average because of the nature's call when it comes to dealing with supports, but it doesn't even look like they're focusing too much on this lane, which... Smoke across! A tour going to be ganked up by Ice 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 and Fenrir! There's no way out for him here! Drops the Sun Strike at the last second, but it's not even close to landing in E-Home. They split ways, Ice 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 heading deeper into the jungle is actually going to get a ward behind the tier 1 tower for potentially more dives in the future. I think part of that was set up too just because the bottom lane was pushed in and the nature's oh, probably 11, aware. you had to be careful against the Drill Ranger! Those frost arrows not letting the Bat Rider escape. And once have a again, quick breather now. That rotation from the nature's profit that makes all the difference right there is they're able to pick up the kill, they get it onto Puppy and He's definitely one of the few players, even playing the 5 position, where you want him to try to get as much farm as he can just because of his potential for the big plays. Yeah, yeah exactly. Earthshaker with, with levels and uh, a quick blink, or even just arcane boots to, to even out the lanes and be able to spam without going back. Really beneficial. And then to go back to the bottom lane, that was sort of a dream scenario for, for Universe, I think. Going up against the Bristleback Winter Wyvern lane isn't going to put a lot of pressure on you. So you're going to be able to get both that farm and level up on you. And then, you know, TPing around for the kills, participating in them, getting the experience and the shared gold. It's going to be a, a good game for Universe up until the point where Bat Rider becomes a threat around the map. And the Bat Rider's already been slowed down for sure. As we can see, he's having to uh, rely entirely on stacks, but this one isn't even that much for him. The one downside for this type of style that Old Eleven likes to utilize is he really wants to get in the lane and try to make something happen. Sometimes it 
does feel as though he's forcing it a little bit too much. Instead of being a little bit more patient, allowing Ice 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 to get set up with the creep, it feels like he's jumping the gun a little bit. Seems like really good for heroes uh, that don't have a very specific item timing like the Bat Rider does. When he's able to play super aggressive, he's forcing a lot of attention to the top lane, and uh... well, apparently Ice 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 has made a friend. I can't tell if he's serious, and I'm still not sure why the crowd is like cheering that. <laughs> Poppy, what a kind soul to save the cockroach. Friend of the animals, the chen player, no surprise. Old chicken and ice, ice, ice. Another wraparound here for ice. This time, smoking up with the mid are going to head to bottom lane now. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to catch out the Furion, but this will be kind of a, a real quick surprise push if... Uh... Sure enough, old chicken pops out of the jungle. Let's lose with that exorcism, and it may not be that Secret can get anything in return. With the exorcism already set up, I doubt they can rotate. Maybe they can get old Levin, though, go for the tier one after that. Yeah, there it is. The Fjordal comes in once again, Universe, displaying his global impact in the game. The trade-off here, too, is that they had to use the DPL for bottom, but not that big of a commitment from Team Secret. And on the way, too, they pick up the kill onto the Batrider. And you, you gotta ask yourself, is that a, a, a question of play by... Oh, no, no, bottom! He's being stunned up! There's so much damage with this Zero Ranger! He gets the save for the Winter Wyvern, but it doesn't matter! The pure damage from the Sun Strike cuts right through! It's sort of a strategical misplay by by Old Eleven on the Batrider. All he needs to do is stay back and avoid being killed while they're pushing the bottom lane because they know the tower isn't contested. Oh, but he's got the lasso. Ice 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 wasn't actually helping him out, but now he's going to come in. The tower is taken by the Dire, but Artur... Oh, he's actually going to be able to get away. The Ice Wall plays the other turnaround. They've got the impale on Old Eleven. He can't go anywhere. He's so damn slow. And Artur... gets the bolt, the best world, and now Secret getting even more. Now Fenrir is going to go down as well. Secret! They are hitting so damn fast with this Draw Ranger lineup, just like that. Boom, boom. Tier 1's on both sides, both top as well as mid. Towers in both, or, or kills in both of these lanes as well. And now Secret even pressuring the Tier 2. I think these are some minor errors by Ehome because they know that uh, when the Catapult comes at top, especially with the Draw being level 6, they're going to want to get aggressive on that area. And the Batrider, I believe the play there is just the Firefly, run away, reset, because you know that the rest of your team has committed fully to that bottom lane. And then to lose a different hero on top of that, it just feels like things are kind of just not shaking up in their favor in the laning phase. Yeah, individual bad decision making. Also, like, just see the, the, the damage output coming out from, for instance, the Nature's Prophet plus 65. It's as if every ranged hero is running around with a double damage rune. They're really utilizing that, as you were saying, Austin. Pushing down the two towers and then just making a quick process of the bad rider. Is this a problem with Ehome's rotations around the map? Are they just not on point here, or are they just getting picked too much that it doesn't matter? I think most of it just comes back to the fact that they're maybe just a little bit disconnected. Mm -hmm. Like, one person wants to make this play, Old Eleven wants to try to defend that top tower, but the rest of his team has already committed the exorcism to bottom. They just have to... Maybe it's a communication thing, and they just kind of have to get on the same page. So, yeah, the, the where did Ehome go from here, then, Jacob? I mean, right now they need to wait for the ISO timings. They, they desperately need to need this blink back off on the bad rider so he can blink in. Bottom, don't tell me he's gonna run into that sun strike. Still sprouted up. He has no way out. Time and time again, secret outnumbering their opponents and claiming these easy picks. And see, just, despite Lanham being the one position bristleback, he doesn't really have to farm to to back up. Like he, he's not tanky enough yet. Not at all, actually, with this draw. Aura. Whereas Artesia has the Midas up and running for him, there's Drums of Endurance on the Nature's Prophet, so they have their first basic item. And, and the only one that... There's actually no one on uh, Ehome's lineup that boasts anything but boots and, and a bottle. Even the Death Prophet getting steadily far behind, and this is not a hero that you necessarily want to have a bad laning phase with. And maybe not behind, but definitely not where she wants to be. More importantly, the Bad Rider. 10 minutes is coming up, still doesn't have that blink, blink dagger available. And that's just going to slow their timings in general. They're going to go for this smoke. Ice 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 doesn't have the Doom available yet. Thinking maybe they can still get a kill on a Pylite die. But the angle for this even just feels a little bit off. 
I mean, the fact that Pilot Die is able to threaten the Death Prophet solo, thanks to the global presence of the Sun Strike, they're actually going to be able to come in. Finger Death goes out. They do have the cold embrace, though. Puppy thinking about running in, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks. Then here, puts a stop to that one, but still, Artur is able to claim that kill. Now the Echo Slam goes out. Get the minute damage, almost put up the finish up with 11. Artur gets the last hit and moves on the line of another stun comes through, and another kill for Secret. And even at the end there, the Winter Wyvern, not really sure what to do as Secret just swarm onto that mid lane. No openings available for them at all, as the Doom wasn't even level 6, they didn't have the Blink Dagger on the Batrider, and even more than the 4 kills, it's going to mean an immediate Roshan. A Roshan at 12 minutes, essentially. I don't see e -Home being able to stop this anymore. Look how fast it's going down! And it's not just that, right? They have two towers down, the score is 12 to 2, and they're getting this 11-minute Roshan. It's a complete demolishing of Secret right now. They're destroying e -Home. Not really sure how they're supposed to recover from this position because things have been slowed down dramatically, especially after that mid fight. The Batrider, who was at 1500 gold, suddenly another 100 gold behind, and he has to reset the timing because he was dead. Ice, ice, ice. Maybe they could have waited for his level 6 before they decided to make that engagement. Instead, he's got to wait for it, and Secret now have pretty firm control of this game. I mean, Ehome at this point, right, you want to be able to tank up Death Prophet, Bristleback. These kind of heroes thrive on being able to survive longer and longer throughout a team fight and outputting some pretty good damage over time. But it just doesn't seem like that's going to be happening faster than secret game damage. Yeah, we've seen a lot of doom in this tournament, but it just hasn't been effective for them at all. He just now turns level 6 with 12 minutes in, and he, he's been uh, participating in one kill. He didn't really offer anything in the top lane. They didn't win the lane. On the contrary, he got all the farm he needed, and Old Eleven has had a rough game throughout this, partly because of his own bad decision making. Top lane, it looks like Ehome, they want to set up for this, and they know they want to try to get aggressive. They're already cutting behind the tower. Old Chicken hasn't popped the ultimate quite yet, but Secret might just decide to go for the trade as Arteezy and Universe are setting up here. Something I want to highlight too. Support player is just not getting enough credit as Puppy 1-0-9, positioning-wise, has just been on point this game. I mean, he's yeah. thinking of that earn pickup, he's so rich. Even when getting stopped in his track by the Winter Wyvern Ultimate in the middle lane, he gets off at a decent Echo Slam that hits on, on two targets in the middle of a creep wave. Something that shouldn't happen. Set up for this bottom push. Let's see how fast the tower dies. Fisher into the Sun Strike on him already at half HP, and he didn't even get hit by that Furion ult. Looks like they're just gonna reset, go for this mid tier 2 tower instead. No reason to all in commit for that tier 3 at bottom, especially when you've already got firm control of the map. Animitis is here for Universe, but Secret. Despite having some of these big farming items, they're not slowing down one bit, they're gonna keep on pushing. E home out of their comfort zone as they take more of these tier 2 towers. And every single time Lonham shows his face, pushes a little bit too far forward, trying to stop Secret. He gets, feels the combo of this magic damage, now he's gonna be stunned up, the Cold Embrace only buying him a little bit of time, Puppy starts charging forward, but a really good silence is laid out from Old Chicken, but still, the Finger of Death cuts through the Bristle Pack once again, and Secret are able to retreat with no losses. They just haven't been able to get this Bristle Pack really involved, and whenever he does show up, he's immediately uh, the recipient of a Finger of Death on the other side, or a Sun Strike, they don't have the best ways to save him either, they have the Winner's, uh, the Cold Embrace, and maybe the Turnaround Winner's Curse, but... Secret have plenty of magic damage to bring him down. Yeah, and Pilot Eye just uh, patiently waiting for the uh, for the Cold Embrace. I think he could have actually just fired it off immediately. But look at the farm on, on all of Secret. The universe actually opts to pick up a hand of Midas just to ensure the the snowball. Got the Blink Dagger now on Pilot Eye. A fully completed Aghanim Scepter for the Invoker. e -home. They're gonna go for the smoke right now. Probably not exactly the situation where they would want to do it considering how far behind they are in item timings but desperate times and it really does limit their movement with this tier one and the mid lane is still up e home are going to cut through the dire jungle but we can see secret just hiding behind their towers no real chance for e home to get the pick off or surprise team fight that they desperately needed to be able to come back
It almost looked like everybody from Secret, by the way, disconnected because they were just waiting, essentially, yeah. because they knew that Ehome was smoked. Nothing was really being farmed, nobody was showing on the map. They figured, okay, it's better for us to just wait things out. Puffy pings around that tower. They're gonna go for the counter smoke of their own as everybody now reveals themselves in this top lane. And a line is being drawn now by Ehome. Maybe they suspect. And this might be an okay opportunity for them as there's only three heroes here. And the ideal situation for them right now is getting that Winter, Winter Wyvern ulti put to maximum use, potentially just killing off Poppy or Artesia on the Invoker right away by their own teammates, and then getting Doom on the other important target. And then for them to extend the fight long enough that Death Prophet takes down the still squishy targets of Nature's Prophet and, and, and Drow Ranger. Winter Wyvern does play pretty well into those hands, right? The increased damage from the Drow Ranger is only going to play against them. With the Winter's Curse comes in, but we have yet to see a really strong Winter's Curse from Fenrir. Yep. And they, they just can't allow themselves to focus on the Invoker right now, because he's the tankiest of all on Secret, and he has that... Oh, okay, the Aegis just, uh, just expired, so that's now they can start focusing him again, actually. But even then, there's so much disable up on um, on the Lion and the Earthshaker, which is sort of ironic, because it's historically a support duo that, that Lanham especially has gone to throughout E-Home history, all the, tracing all the way back to 2010. This was how the Chinese teams played. They got these two heroes that was full of disables and crowd control. Winter Wyvern pushing out that top lane. Ice, ice, ice. Trying to look like... Looks like he's going for the mech, something we don't see often, just because you don't really have the mana pool to support. Mm -hmm. Maybe even just going for the Vlads and going for the casual buckler. Probably makes a lot more sense. Yeah, we saw a lot of the casual buckler from Puppy. Looks like they're going to be able to run into Pilot Dial. Oh no! Quick fingers from Pilot Dial allows him to blink back in time. And, and Puppy's only 500, 500 gold away from that blink dagger. What do you even do at that point if you're like someone like Death Prophet who's hoping to be able to get the good exorcism and push out and survive for a while in this team fight? Now there's an opportunity for Seeker when they have that blink to jump on her and instantly blow her up. Yeah, they've got a lot of gap closing on her and when you play as a Death Prophet, it's not the best scenario when you've got things that can instantly disable, especially when both supports can have a hex. It just means that you just need two heroes at any phase of the game to get kills. That universe can just TP in if an echo opportunity is set up, for example. Secret, they're gonna smoke up behind this invoker. Trying to scout out the jungle and maybe find any way to pick off a hero so that they can go high ground, but it looks like Ehome kind of understand what's going on here. Oh, the Pacer lands! The beautiful setup from Secret! Whoa. The combination of abilities just allows for him to be able to kill Ice 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 before he even realizes he's dead. That was fast. I definitely didn't expect him to be able to Like, one second, there's smokes, the next second, Fisher, Sunstrike, and Finger of Death, and he's gone. It wasn't even like he was terribly out of position. He was no. barely outside the base, but Ehome just can't really do anything about it. They don't really have any of those counter disables of their own. If you look at the rest of their lineup, they so heavily rely on being able to start the fight rather than being able to counter the fight. And even if Secret commits their entire lineup for that kill, it doesn't really matter all too much because they force Ehome to be inside of their base. And the universe, of course, on the Nature's Prophet then gets to, to farm on the top lane, knowing that Ehome needs to, to stay within their base. Yeah, exactly. It's just creating pressure all around the map. And this is one of Nature's Prophet's best strengths, is that he can just send summons top, you deal with it, then it opens up a little bit more of the jungle. I like how nasty our, our tour of farming in the uh, the Radiant Jungle like this and having his Forge Spirits positioned so far forward. He's even got the tornado, you know, ready to go just in case. It's like a panic button if E-Home all of a sudden get the jump on him. He still has a way to be able to escape and they're just getting so much information. So Secret's plan now is just to constantly have the... Uh... The creep waves on the the radiant side of the map, constantly keeping tabs of, of where Ehome would be and not allowing them to have any openings through a, a Batrider gank. You see Universe picking up or going for a Aghanim Scepter on the Nature's Prophet. That combined with the Draw Aura is just gonna keep the creep waves constantly flowing into the... Then we are caught! To the radiant it's, not, it's not even a question. It's not even a question at this point. Is Secret, find a hero. There's really no hope for an escape from anybody for E-Home. It's now Ice 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 gonna be the one spotted out. Fisher leads the way. The physical damage has no problem. Keeping Doom down, Old Eleven is gonna try and get himself out. Still has the blink, so he will stay ahead of Universe. But Secret... I think they just found the opening required for them to confidently take the Tier 2 at top. 
Yeah, they've almost got the Blink Dagger now on the Earthshaker too. Not a whole lot of time left for that one, but right now E-Home trying to do whatever they can, just, just keep the game going. Maybe wait for Secret to get overconfident and try to go for an ill-advised high ground. But Roshan is up and it's probably going to be the next objective as soon as they take out this tier 2 tower. And Secret just playing very disciplined. It's like a systematic dismantling of E-Home. Where, wherever they go on the map, as soon as they go outside of their base, they're just going to be, be found by... But Highlight and of course Universe always always ready on the TP. Going in for their second Roshan now. I know the smokes have failed, but uh, it is a little bit surprising to me that Secret, because they're playing such a control heavy game at this point, that E Home aren't like just trying to run in Secret and see you know what changes. You know, maybe because at this point we're just looking at that they're being suffocated, right? You've got almost you've got double the net worth on the invoker over both the Death Prophet as well as the Bristleback. Yeah. I mean, with the, with the control and the net worth they have right now, this was just what they needed. They needed to pick up that Aegis in order for them not to overcommit and possibly throw away their lead. And then, at the same time, you have Poppy who picks up his Blink Dagger and hits that magical level 11 where Earthshaker's ultimate just becomes even better. So, I think they're in, in, in full ability to push down the, the E-Home base, but they don't even need to. Like, that's the biggest thing here. They have the much better late game, they have the much better control, and they are so far ahead that for, for E-Home to catch up is almost impossible at this point. Yeah, things are just kind of getting out of hand right now. As the Death Prophet at one point had 1,200 gold, maybe seven minutes ago on top of that drums. Hasn't really found very many advancement opportunities as they just kind of keep flitting between the lanes, trying to get whatever they can out of the first two camps without going too far away as... I mean, look at how much they can farm with impunity because they know there's so much presence on the map for them instantly. If Pilot Die finds something on the map, you just simply stun, get the Sunstrike off, the Nature's Prophet can ultimate, that's a kill every single time. Now, all the meanwhile, our tier 3s are being chipped away. Universe is only going to amp that up now that he's got the Aghanim Scepter. I didn't even realize that the score was 16-2, to 2, and I believe nothing has really happened in uh, the last few minutes. Both of... 11 at top, trying to look for something, but he's got to play kind of that long con where he's going to sit in the trees for a really long time, wait for somebody from secret to push just a bit too far and try and strike on that opportunity. Unfortunately, we see secret rotating out as a three-man crew, and now we're going to cut across to mid. Would you get impatient and try and force the issue, Will? If you're, if you're secret, do you feel like you're so much in control that you might as well go knocking on the front door? I mean, they're just taking so much of the map right now that I don't think it matters. They're passively gaining a ton of gold at top. Look again, the combo. They can still get pick off. The sun strike is it gonna be enough. It is. Oh man, our torch is so far ahead in levels that that damage is too much. Highlight die is gonna be caught. That's the turnaround kill. And you almost have to wonder. <laughs> that's actually worth it for Ehome simply because of the fact that secret are so far ahead. It is worth it for them. They just got almost a thousand gold for that kill. I think it's well worth it for them, especially since it's one of those morale boosters too. You pick up a kill, you think, okay, maybe Secret will continue to do stuff like that and they'll trade favorably for us. They are going to have the mech, so... Secret gets like a 5% addition to their kill score, whereas E-Homes was a... <laughs> that is drastic one, one way to look at it. So... There's one positive way to look at it. Another positive way, Doom will have a mech quite soon. Increase in sustain, a little bit of armor as well. Should help against some of these right clicks. But that just tells the tale of this game, right? They have a Doombringer, we are almost 25 minutes into the game and he hasn't completed his first item with his uh, mechanism. Old 11, scouts out some of these things. Goes for the Tiki Napalm, he's gonna start pulling back Eternal Envy, but a three-man Fisher, now the full of two-man impale. Highline there is gonna be doomed up, but everything goes set up for Poppy to come in for the Echo Slam. Bottom's gonna be run down by Artur, the Fury Zone comes in, puts Old 11 low enough that they can get that kill as well, and they're just planning to wipe E-Home if possible. There it is, a buyback for the Wyvern, but you can't stop Secret. It'll end on a good old 3-2-2 for game number one between Secret and E-Home. That's some good old fan service by Evo, <laughs> letting you get to that point, calling it quits. First time I've seen two of the greater treats as well with that Nature Shock Ultimate, but dominant performance. I've seen he actually topped plus 300 damage in that push. Gentlemen, what?